this time on Genevision, the Spectrum Beta that sank without trace. It's the fashion on these kind of YouTube channels that the owner of the channel is supposed to be an expert on everything and has used every single computer and is the king of all computers. Well, yeah, that, that's not true, is it? Because there's plenty of computers I've never owned and even the ones I have owned, I get stuff wrong about. And, <laughs> you know, you're learning all the time, aren't you? And here's a computer I've never seen until a few weeks ago. The Auric One. Aimed as being a Spectrum Beta, released in 1983. I've never used one. These things had disappeared from the scene by the time I arrived in 1985 with home computers. I never saw one. Never even saw a game on sale for the Auric, uh, apart from possibly some remaindered ones, once for things like Dragons and ZX81s, but... It was this kind of thing that you sometimes read about in old books or old magazines. It was a joke. It was the computer that failed. Um, you'd see things in New Computer Express. If they wanted to make out that something was particularly useless, they would make a joke about an Auric or a machine like that. And yeah, um, it's something I've been looking at getting in for the channel. And I've, I've failed several times bidding on them on eBay. And recently I got an email from Carlos, who watches the channel, and said... He'd found this Auric, and for the price of postage, did I want it? And I said, yes, please. So here we are with an Auric 1. Now, the Auric was produced by Tangerine Computer Systems. What a name. They were a company founded at the end of the 70s by Mark Rayner, Nigel Penton Tilbury, and Dr. Paul Johnson. And Nigel Penton Tilbury is a name you may remember if you were the kind of person sad enough like me to read the end credits of television shows. You'll know he's the guy who did the communications for Treasure Hunt and Interceptor and, uh, and Skyrunners as well, but no one mentions Skyrunners. They've produced um, various computer products, but this was designed as the Spectrum Beta. The financial backers of Tangerine wanted a home computer, and they founded Auric Products International Limited to release the Auric One. There's not a huge amount of these things around. 160,000 were apparently sold in the UK, according to Wikipedia, so how true that is, I don't know. And another 50,000 sold in France, where it's the top-selling computer of 1983. And of course, everything changes when Amstrad arrive on the scene and, and dominate for the second half of the 1980s. There was a successor announced, the Oric Atmos. Have seen one of those at the Futures 8 Bits house. And they also started looking at things like a MSX compatible Oric, but it writing was on the wall. This thing did not sell well. The final years of Tangerine and Oric computers were, well, uh, uh, just disastrous, really. If you read through personal computing news, Every week there's a story about something going wrong at Oracle, or Oracle going to launch a new computer. And yeah, it, it, the Oracle just sinks as the UK home computer market settles down and people aren't buying them. The sales charts speak for themselves. You could do a whole video on Tangerine and Oracle and it would go on for years and years and years. It's, it's a fascinating story. But we're looking at the Oracle one today and what have we got here? We've got a system with a 6502 processor in it. It runs on a modified version of Microsoft Basic. 48K of RAM in this model here, although I believe there was a 16K model as well. Uh, an AY38912 sound chip. So it's already got one up on the spectrum there because it's got the same sound processor as the Amstrad would come to have and the MSX and the Atari ST. Graphics are 240 by 200 with eight colors, and it does have a tribute clash. The keyboard is this, um, yeah, it, it's trying to be one up on the spectrum, isn't it? But not quite. It's like a, a fancy calculator keyboard is the only way I can describe it. It's not completely unpleasant to use. It, it's more just weird that you, everything is like a tic-tac in terms of... <laughs> keys to press and sometimes things don't register especially on the spacebar 
very well, presumably because there's one or two sensors under there. I don't know. Uh, we'll have a look inside in a little bit. But, you know, it's a Spectrum competitor, so it, it's nicer to use than the rubber keys. If we look at the back, what do we have? Helpfully, nothing is labelled. Uh, presumably because Tangerine wanted to send this to different markets and you need costly inserts to put all the things in languages or have multi-language like Amstrad did. And yeah, it's so it's kind of almost like guesswork, really, some of this. Plug the cable in because you've got the UHF out there. That doesn't output sound like a Spectrum doesn't. The actual speaker is on the bottom, but it's bigger than a Spectrum, so a bit more beefy. One of these is the RGB out, and yeah, it's got RGB. And um, one of these is the cassette out. I think that's the uh, one. One of them's cassette out. One of them's the RGB out. Uh, actually, I've got the RGB lead here. That's RGB. That is cassette. You've got a Centronics printer port there. Uh, work. Go to any Centronics Epson compatible printer, and there you have a, just an expansion port. So it's not an edge connector like a Spectrum. It's just a, kind of like like a BBC Micro, which is quite nice. Far more durable. You've also got somewhere on here, if I can see it, uh, tucked in up the end, nine volt input for the power. It's a nine volt center positive supply. Do not plug your spectrum supply into it or you will blow your auric up. The styling is quite nice. It feels far more substantial than a spectrum. In fact, let me go and get a 48K spectrum, two seconds. I've not used my 48K for ages because um, I've been using the Plus, actually, for all the capture stuff. But there we go. And you can see the Oric is substantially bigger than the Spectrum. It's thicker, it's longer, it's wider. And yeah, there's a... Spectrum looks nicer though, doesn't it? Um, but keyboard on the Oric is nicer. Let's put them together there so you can see the size. So yeah, you can see the difference on the kind of, you know, the, the, the Oryx kind of wedge with a keyboard on top of it. And the Spectrum is just this kind of block. Um, so it feels like a more substantial computer and a more costly machine. So if you look at these two machines thinking, well, cost wise, what are we talking about? Well, the Oric, the 16K version, 129, 48K version, 169. Of course, the 48K Spectrum, 179. So you're undercutting the 48K Spectrum by £10, which is quite something when you think about it. You're getting a larger machine with a, a better keyboard and better expansion ports and so on for £10 less than this with its rubber keys, with its flaky edge connector at the back, with its cheaper connections. Um, that's not, that's not bad really, is it? But of course, history will tell you that all that mattered was the fact the Spectrum had loads of software available for it and the Oric didn't. And of course, I showed those ports on the back there and the Oric has RGB out. As you can see, I've got a Retro Computer Shack cable here. If I can get it all together. So that comes out on a DIN connector, if you can see that there. Which means, with the Oric, you can plug into your TV with SCART RGB and get excellent quality. Whereas with that Spectrum, it's composite and that's if you mod it. As I mentioned, like the Spectrum, the Oric only puts its sound out via the speaker on the back. It can't modulate it in with the TV output. And in fact, um, you'd hope that it actually outputs the sound via the tape connector um, like the Spectrum does, but it doesn't. As far as I can see, I haven't made that work. When I've done capture on this, I've had to put a microphone next to the Oric to record the audio. Someone may tell me there's a way of doing it, but on the cassette output, um, I've got nothing coming out of the mic out unless I'm actually saving from the Oric. I think we should have a look and see what's inside here and see how it compares to a Spectrum. Um, 
it is uh, all uh, kind of six screws there that I can get in. So hopefully I'm not going to wreck this machine because I've not been inside here or anyone like this. As I say, this is a machine that, you know, Spectrums of various kinds, handling them since the late 80s. Uh, know my way around. I wouldn't, wouldn't try anything other than basic repairs, but I can point, you know, around inside and say that's the ULA, that's and you know, that's the video generator and so on. Um, this, no idea. So let's, let's open it up and see what we've got. Incidentally, someone on Twitter the other day was saying, oh, these ramekin things, oh, they're really bad and you shouldn't save them, blah, 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 they're no use. Rubbish, they are great for doing this, putting your screws. I've lost all my screwdrivers, I'm going to use this one. Um, they've all gone walkabout. I can laugh at my pathetic screwdriver. It does have a magnetic tip, however, although these aren't... Oh no, they are magnetic screws. That's good. It's it's really good of Carlos to you know, give this to me. I'm I'm really appreciative. I I don't generally accept machine donations. I think the last thing was uh, Bowdy giving the 486 laptop, which was super helpful because I just kept on buying 486 laptops, and they were all broken. So. <laughs> For the PC capture, he kindly sent me that. But that must have been like three, uh, certainly pre the event. Um, so that's, you usually buy things in. And indeed it's, yeah, I've bought in the tape cable. Actually, I didn't buy the tape cable. It's the same as the BBC, the tape cable. Um, forgot to mention that on the cassette out, but you don't need a dedicated Oric cable you just need a bbc an electron cable i think it's that and then whoa 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 wow wow i wasn't expecting that i wasn't expecting that let's get you in whoa right well this is a tidy clean board has carlos been in here before is it just very clean look at it look at the darkness of that board that looks like something later it's an issue four and look at the size the, the massive speaker in the middle of the board there wow this is nicely done my, this is my first impression this is a nicely done but this isn't your spectrum kind of shove it all over here and what have you a lot of stuff socketed it. Has it been socketed afterwards? Because you've got one chip there that isn't socketed, and then you've got two chips there that are. Someone been in here and repaired this. Um, wow, all right, let's have a look around and see what we've... So we've got the AY chip there. I can point you to that. AY. Uh, what have we got around there? My eyes aren't what they were. Um some date codes of 83 week 9 83 week 11 83 week 14 83 not a lot of capacitors to worry about here um and look at that voltage regulator with the big heat sink look at that is that original there look at that Look at that, look at that, it's a very modern looking heat sink with fins. It's, again, I wonder if someone's, I don't know, I need to, I need to look. Really don't I, I had to get my phone out and look at Auric One main board. Yeah, that's original from the pictures I can see online. And quite remarkable really. This machine only has one ROM in it. The earlier revisions apparently have two ROMs. Presumably that's just a bigger ROM in there if you're looking for the 6502 well it's the chip there marked 6502 a uh, week 11 1983 while we're here give you a closer look up on the ay which is there and i'll say it again it's such a nicely laid out board and the only incongruous thing is this giant speaker in the middle which incidentally is quite loud I assume there's not going to be any rot issues 
with the speaker of any replacements are needed for that. I've had, as you've seen on the channel before, I bought a 1980s boombox and speakers rattled themselves out. But that, that looks okay. Hopefully there won't be any issues there. I don't know how easy that would be as a replacement um, in terms of sticking something else on there. Or you could just get rid of it and root an audio out or something. A lot of is that a lot of RAM there? Is that 64K of RAM? That doesn't seem right. Ah, that's clever. It is 64K of RAM. The top 16K is overlaid by the basic, leaving 48K free. So that's that's really impressive. Because think of all the other computers that where the basic loads in, like the, like the VIC-20, that has 3.5K left after basic has loaded in. On the Oric, it's actually saying, look, you've got 48K of memory available um, when you turn it on. Not we're not, not that like Spectrum, we're giving you 48K, but actually there's less available because basic is loading in. Again, you know, they're giving you more RAM for £10 less than the Spectrum 48K. That's, again, really impressive. Your modulator's up there. Um, again, if you want UHF output, you can use that. But again, as I pointed out, there's no sound coming out of there. And you've got RGB anyway, so really no composite mods or anything like that needed. You just use the RGB. That chip there is the ULA, which is socketed for easy replacement if, if, if it goes wrong. Um, so yeah, you've got that, got that in there for the kind of bit of custom silicon. And the number on that chip there, 6522A, is a bit of a giveaway. That is the IO and it is next to the 6502. Really like this, really impressed. And yeah, proper, <laughs> it is. Again, you don't see this, do you? The board is mounted on the back of the keyboard and the keyboard, there might be some kind of membrane under there, but it's actually a solid circuit board. How are they making money on these things compared to the Spectrum? Perhaps they weren't, perhaps that's why they went bust. Ah, now I've noticed something on this little switch. If you look at the bottom of the case there, there's a hole. I think that's a reset switch. It's hidden underneath there and you need to put a pen or something in there or that's your finger won't do it to reset the system if you need to. That's, I can I'm only imagine that's the only thing I've asked online. I've had uh, not many sensible <laughs> answers, really. The best thing I can think of is some kind of system reset, possibly reset so you don't lose the content of the RAM. Because I can't think why you'd have it so recessed unless I'm missing something like a point, yeah, top of a button there that goes over it that I, I don't have. That could be it. That could be it. There perhaps there should be something there where it protrudes a bit more, but I don't know. Um, answers in the comments below. Oh, like fans are probably crossed. I don't know, but these things are a voyage of discovery <laughs> when you open them up. And, you know, wonderful system. Just at the end here, before I close this back up, I was giving it a wipe over. See if you can see in there. You see that? There's a, a rubber mat. Just, I don't want to take this keyboard out because chances are I take this apart. It won't work again. But there's a rubber mat there and I'm imagining there's conductive pads on the bottom and that presses onto that board there um, that sets the keys off. So again, it's a nicer setup than the Spectrum, although I guess at least with Speccy you can get spares and uh, if your membrane goes wrong. But yeah, uh, these things are pressing down onto a rubber mat, like a TV remote control. Yes, I can see one there. You want me to see that? It work, yeah, it works exactly like a remote control. TV remote control, you want me to see that? But hard button presses down onto a rubber mat, conductive pad on the bottom presses onto a hard circuit board, and that, that is your keyboard. Again, that's costing more money than Sinclair are spending on their cheap Mylar 
keyboards in the spectrum that cost £10 more. Nice. I should mention the case badge. Now, rumour has it that the colour OIC case badge makes your computer super rare. But according to the OIC websites, this isn't the case. The, it's equally spread between the grey labels and the colour labels. So there's no preference really when you're coming to buy one of these. Right, all back together. And I think it's about time we had a look at some software running on this machine. So here's what you get when you turn on your Oric and look, it, it's very similar to a Spectrum and 47,870 bytes free because of course, as I mentioned, although it's an Oric 48K and was sold as such, it has 64K of RAM and the video and the basic uh, in that extra 16K of RAM you've got. So you genuinely have a 48K computer as opposed to, a, we'll say an Amstrad CPC, where you have 64K of RAM, but you lose 16K to video memory, then you lose more to the basic, and you actually end up with something like 42, something like that. Here you go, you've actually got 48K actually available to you. And anyone who first turns on an Auric cannot resist using the basic commands that are provided to do sound effects, namely ping, shoot, explode, and zap. So the command to load is familiar to Microsoft Basic users. It is C load. The machine isn't exactly full of big name titles. And we just have a look at a selection of what is on the system. This is not comprehensive, but here we go. Here's a familiar title. It's Mr. Wimpy, reviewed on the channel before. And it's comparable to the Spectrum version, but well, looking nicer. Cracker Jack, a game you may have come across on the Amstrad CPC by Paul Shirley. But here we have an Oric version. And again, a very similar display to the Spectrum. This is going to be a recurring theme. The Oric is in many ways a posh Spectrum. Manic Miner, and if you, like me, download a tape image online, then play it into your Oric, you will need the code sheet. And this looks like a French release because of course as I mentioned the Oric was popular in France or well, they may have been cracked in France I don't know anyway it is Manic Miner as you'd expect again you've got Color Clash Willy is changing color down there in very similar <laughs> way he would on the spectrum the game plays exactly as you would want Manic Miner to play so you have a really good version of one of the biggest games of the day on your Auric. And of course, unless you had a monitor or a really high-end TV at the time, you wouldn't have seen this in RGB goodness. Ratsplat from Tansoft. It's uh, a bit mad. Uh, it's frantic arcade action but i didn't find it a lot of fun a apparently highly rated oric title is xenon one and it's a fairly fluid shoot em up like a bit like galaxians but with different graphics uh, be warned the oric keyboard isn't the best for playing games on uh, it's as I said, it's a better keyboard than the Spectrum, but it suffers from the same issues I have with the 48k plus where keys sometimes jam down As I say the Oric really isn't a major gaming system It's life was short and for example you get Manic Miner But you don't get Jet Set Willy which didn't come out that long afterwards so it, it's a very narrow window where you've got the big name games on the Oric and therefore the catalog is constrained accordingly. There are SD card solutions available for the Oric. Perhaps we look at those another day. They look interesting. It's the kind of thing I could potentially buy in 
for the channel. But today, as I say, I've restricted myself to showing you just some of the games I've managed to load off of cassette image. The Auric, a machine I hadn't ever properly used until a few weeks ago. Lovely to have my hands on one at last and not have to check games out on emulation and what have you. And it's impressive. It is an improved Spectrum, an upmarket specy. It's the kind of machine Sinclair should have put out with better sound, better build quality. I mean, look at that main board. Better, you know, no edge connectors. A proper, connect, proper connectors for expansion like the BBC Micro. A genuine 48K of RAM, nothing being taken away from you there. And it's just vastly improved. A, a better keyboard as well. That's okay. Improved sounds and a better keyboard, something Sinclair are going to give you in a couple of years' time. But you're getting it on the Auric now. In theory, this is a no brainer. You look at one machine, you look at the other, and you go, well, I'd pick the Auric. The thing is, the machine didn't have any measure of success at all due to the lack of titles, due to the lack of sales, due to the financial woes of the company and just all the bad press around the machine. And it's a, a real shame that this happened because actually this machine I've got here, it, it's nice to use. It's nice to look at. I don't have enough stuff to run on it, but for Spectrum money, you're getting an improved machine in so many ways. Okay, less colors. You don't have bright, you've just got eight colors like the BBC Micro. And it certainly feels more like a machine in the league of the BBC Micro than the budget end of the Spectrum. But you're paying Spectrum money for all this goodness. It's a lovely little machine, one that I'm really glad I own and one I'm hoping to explore more over the coming weeks and months.